Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna go over an amazing risk example here that somebody brought up on our risk management video, the introduction. I'll put a link to it, maybe above in a card or in the description below. This is part of our risk management series here, and this is a great opportunity to look at a real world problem, talk about how I would actually view this as a quant and a risk manager, which might surprise many of you on how we approach this. Um, but let's just dive on into this. So the question here is certain banks and credit unions tend to have questionable practices in handling customers' personal data, keeping social security number, name, address, date of birth, and plain sight um, is one of them since it's convenient to them in terms of operation costs. How does one create a statistical model to measure the risk then? So basically what they're getting at is credit unions, smaller firms tend to be lax on rules. And I have actually noticed this when I have attended small credit unions, banks, uh, financial institutions, uh, typically for family or some sort of other transaction or some sort of interaction that I have with these uh, other institutions here. And yes, they tend to, some of them lax the rules because it's much easier to do here. So you really have two things going on here. One is going to be what I'm going to point out, which is you have bad company culture. So that's going to be the biggest hurdle to actually face here on a risk management framework. And it doesn't seem like it's traditional risk management, right? I'm not going to go in uh, and measure and calculate and pull data and do things very quantitatively. What you actually need to look at here is you have a management problem. So you might not even be able to fix this because you have poor management and a lack of support in the risk management framework. That's really what I'm going to hit at on the first piece of this. Now, for my risk management classification and going through the risk inventory here, um, if this was identified by an employee, compliant somebody, this would be an operational risk. And why this is an operational risk is because the way that the bank is operating exposes the firm to um, financial fines, fees, but more importantly, um, there's a reputational damage that's going to go along with this. So this is kind of a multi-class problem on here. So you have bad culture. You don't have people implementing rules that should be implemented. Um, this comes down to, again, poor training and operational compliance around the firm in itself. And the actual result is this is going to be financial fines, fees, and reputational damage here. So this is really going to be operational and reputational damage depending how you kind of look at this. So how would I go about actually doing the risk assessment and adding this into an inventory here? Um, to start off with here, I would start to just research other firms that have been fined for sort of data issues or mishandling of data here. Um, and as you can kind of pull up here on Google, I'm showing uh, PNC Bank was hit. It looks like with a lawsuit here with PII information. Um, we could open that over here on the right if we wanted to jump into that PNC data breach class action lawsuit. Um, Evolve Bank and Trust, again, had one in 2024. Equifax had a $575 million settlement in a 2017 data breach. So now we're starting to get into these numbers that we're looking at on how do we assess this risk. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning, right, this is a moral and ethical problem just on the face of it. Like you should do the best by your customers. That's why the law is there. So you really shouldn't have to go into this sort of data analysis and process. But if you wanted to, if you wanted to put it in the inventory, if you have management that doesn't support you, this is the process I would go through. Um, again, Morgan Stanley agrees to pay $120 million settlement um, for two security breaches. Again, 15 million cu customers. Um, Capital One's $190 million for 100 million people. Um, and then again, Bank of America's $225 million. Um, it's split up into a $100 million penalty. And I believe there's like a $125 million penalty that goes into some sort of treasury account to kind of help... Um, with some of these issues and damages that have occurred here. Now, keep in mind when you're going to pitch these, if you're pitching these to a senior management role, um, look at the number of people impacted and look at the dollar amounts and then scale these appropriately given the size of your credit union. So in this case, right, they had 15 million customers leaked, 120 million. This might not seem like a big deal to a small firm because they might scale in a very specific manner here. But even then, if you can look at these financial interactions and say, this is gonna cost us even like $2 million in fines and penalties, if we have an issue, that's something serious that's going to happen here. Now, measuring the probability of your information being stolen because you're not storing it properly, or um, maybe you have like a bunch of documents or notebooks with customer information like sitting all over your desk and people are walking by, that probability is going to be nearly impossible to get an actual mathematical measure of. Right. But that being said, if that's happening daily, weekly, monthly, like this is a consistent problem here, the probability of it happening and being stolen is probably quite high as it's going to just be like a matter of time of when it's going to be stolen or when some sort of issue is going to happen here. So, again, small firms, less regulated, um, that's going to be the hard part of convincing them to do the right thing here. 
but you can start to nail this down with monetary amounts, looking at um, past fines from different sort of regulatory agencies based on data breaches, because this would just be end up being a data breach. Like that is going to be the negative consequence here of this happening. And so as I mentioned here, the way I would do the actual calculation and put these into an inventory themselves is just take these fines, divide them out by the number of people collected, um, and then scale that by the size of your entire financial institution. So if somebody went in and stole a bunch of data, this would be the consequences of this. That's how I would go about it to put it into the inventory itself. Now, how do you actually manage the risk on this? You need management support and you're gonna have to do what's called compliance audits. Um, so every big bank I've been at, even small firms I've been at, um, have these rules. One of them, for example, is your computer should be always locked when you leave it. I don't know why this is an issue. Smaller firms I have seen tend not to care as much. Big financial institutions, even when I'm like locked up on the 15th floor with, you know, multiple layers of security to get there, it is still company policy that anytime you leave your computer, if I need to run to get a drink, go to the bathroom, um, you're going to need to lock your computer before you leave. Um, typically your manager, it's your manager's responsibility to say something or do something. Now this compliance audits happen in kind of two ways here. Often they should be coming around after hours, like once a month, once a quarter, set up some sort of plan here, the risk management plan, and say we're going to go around and we're going to issue notes and warnings to employees for violating these. So if you come around my desk and I've got, you know, a bunch of paperwork of some sort just sitting all out of my desk um, and it's PII, then, you know, you need to write a note on there and say, hey, this is your first warning. Compliance will go around and make a list of everyone that has an issue. And then you'd go about this in the sense of like an escalation process of you were warned, maybe the first month or the first quarter, happening in second quarter, now your manager needs to sit down and talk to you and be documented. This should go into your performance review as an employee. If this keeps happening, then you need to let people go, write them up, do something that's going to change the company culture. So that everybody takes it very seriously uh, and data and information and it's locked away in drawers before you go into the night. Now, that being said, I've worked at big institutions and they have clean desk policy in general. So I will have, again, I don't have anything with me right here, but I'll have a big stack of papers um, academic papers that you can easily find online for free, you know, public information all sitting on my desk. That was all still required to be locked away. So I would try to like either take the documents with me, the papers that I'm reading and working on, um, or if it's documentation for the company or whatever, it's all locked away in my drawers at night. And then if I have to take anything with me, I put it in my bag and take it with me so that we comply with the clean desk policy. Now, as an employee, yes, this feels absolutely ridiculous, but as you do it for a year or two, it becomes company culture. Like you're like, hey, let's just clean everything up real quick and you're out of there and you have clean desk policy. Now, the second piece of this is gonna be in-day audits as well, which also need to occur. So let's say everybody locks everything up at night. That's going great. You have that nailed down. What really needs to happen is compliance or someone needs to walk through or manager specifically need to be responsible, but compliance should go through risk management um, and make notes like doing a daily audit as well. So again, not daily, daily, but come in the middle of a day, a work day, um, walk the office, whether it's an executive, compliance, somebody, and take notes and make an agenda here of like, okay, these people had documents sitting out. There were no customers at their desks. They weren't being filed properly. They weren't being held correctly. This is a risk to the firm in itself. And this is going to be a tier one risk or a tier two risk. That's probably how I would classify it based on the severity of this. It's reputational damage that you're going to take, which is gonna be hard to estimate. And then more specifically, you could have actually face fines from regulators for this as well. So that is how I'd go about this. No statistical model needed. How would I build a statistical model? Um, again, you might be able to go and find all these different lawsuits I'm finding on the line, looking at the occurrence over them over time, trying to gather all this extra data for this and go through some sort of big exercise of how frequently does this occur within the industry and then calculate out some sort of probability of this happening and then apply that probability to these financial losses based on the number of uh, breaches and customers. So like I mentioned before, but all of that to be honest with you is a big waste of time. I wouldn't spend a lot of effort doing that. That's like poor risk management practices. We're spending a bunch of time and energy and resources on something that we already know should be corrected. We need to stand best by our customers. Um, we need to manage these and follow regulatory requirements because that's the rule. Um, so I really wouldn't dump a lot of time into doing a statistical model. There's no need to do it. You could easily go in here and just grab some data, say, hey, these are a bunch of fines from a bunch of different institutions. This is the number of customers impacted. This would be the financial impact of it. Um, that's the easy part of the fines. And then again, reputational damage is gonna have to be an estimate there. 
I don't know how you do that. That's going to have to be just some sort of number. But at the end of the day, it really shouldn't be that critical. It shouldn't stop your risk management practices. This should go right into the risk inventory with the estimated operational loss dollars in there. Should be probably a tier one issue because it's a regulatory you know, body that's going to be oversight on you. And two, you do what's best for your customers. That's what financial institutions should be doing here. So again, I would tier it as a tier one. Um, small bank, depending on the size, credit unions, probably a couple million dollars is going to be um, the expected losses, fines, and penalties for this. So I would put that in there as the inventory and fill that out as well. And then I'd get on the horn here as risk management, really driving that, getting compliance involved um, and getting some management support here because everybody's gonna have to get involved in this to make sure that you're following some sort of corporate rules here. So you manage those risks by putting rules in place and doing audits. So anyways, I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, until next time. Thanks.